uh, thanks for this introduction. Um, some words about ourselves. So my name is Christian. I'm a PhD student from Bochum, and I'm also a founder of the HackManet GmbH in Germany. We're doing pen tests and security audits and so on. And I'm doing this talk together with Christopher, who started his PhD also in Bochum, and also Vladislav is in the audience, who has also done an important part of this work. So, as you might guess, this talk is about XXE and uh, DTDs and so on, so we're talking about XML. Okay, so some motivation. XML, you can parse it, you have to parse it if you have to work with it, so what could prob probably go wrong? It's just XML. Um, as we might have seen in the last years, there were a lot of problems when parsing XML. So problems are known since 2002, as far as I know, but even in 2016, we can still find vulnerabilities. Most, the most famous one maybe is uh, XXE, so XML, external entity attack, which allows you to read some system files you shouldn't be able to. And uh, we asked ourselves, so, What's the problem behind it? So why do we still, 14 years after we've discovered all these problems, why do we still have to handle with them? So what's the reason for this? And in this talk, we try to find an answer for this. Um, first, I will give you an introduction to a, a text, which is maybe most useful for pen testers, uh, because if you're uh, yeah, trying to, to work or test some XML application, you should really test for those attacks. Um, and the second part given by Christopher is the uh, evaluation of uh, XML parsers. So he took a vast number of parsers and looked if they are vulnerable in their default configuration. And I can say that the results are really impressive. Okay, so let's go back to the foundations. Um, XML has some really nice uh, feature which enables all the attacks I will present. Um, it's named document type definition. So document type definition is basically a kind of grammar uh, for XML. So you can describe, for example, there is a document, it has some child elements, some sub elements, you can describe the data that is contained in it, and so on. So it's a grammar. But it also has some features. Um, to motivate these features, just suppose you own a nice car and you have a garage and you are managing it with some XML file. So this is quite easy. Okay, we have a simple XML file and we have our content in it. Um, however, if you are like most people, you have a lot of cars. And um, if you have so many cars, you somehow need to manage them a little bit more efficient. So this was the initial idea of um, entities, so what you could do is simply, um, you could see parts that are used more often. And you can handle this uh, by using a document type definition, and you can define some, some entity, which is basically a storage unit. So for example, in this case, we define this entity car, and we assign it some, some string value to it. And what we can then do is we can simply instead of using the string Ferrari, we can simply use the entity. And this is quite useful if you're having large XML documents and you're reusing larger parts, so that's the initial idea of it. So you might ask, what can go wrong? What's wrong with it? So there are a lot of attacks abusing document type definitions. So XML external entity is the most famous one, I think, but there's even more. So the topic of this uh, talk is just XXE, but there are a lot of more attacks, and they are commonly referred as XXE, although they are sometimes denial of service or server-side request forgery. So there's a lot of things you can do with document type definitions. So let's first have a look at denial of service. So this attack is known since more than a decade of years, um, and it's famous for its name, the billion laugh attack. Um, you might guess an idea why it's so called when we come to it. So let's suppose we have an XML document and it defines multiple entities. And the trick here is 
that they are recursively defined and reference each other. So what happens if, is if you dereference the entity C, it will be looked up into the document type definition, it is found, and it's replaced by its value. But in comparison to the previous example, it's not just a simple string. There are more entities defined. So the parser will go on, it will find a new entity B, it will be replaced by the entity value, and so on and so forth. And finally, we receive at the, at the last entity, and it's replaced by some string. So this is the basic concept idea of the billion laugh attack. So this is not really a DOS attack, so you might guess oh, what's, what's the, the problem with it. But if you increase the number of uh, recursive entities, and if you increase uh, the number, or if you increase th this number, then the document grows larger. So it, the impact is quite huge. So you can really define a small number of XML bytes, not parsed XML, just, just a string, a small number, and it will be expanded to a large number of gigabytes or even terabytes or whatever you like. So you can easily consume more memory than is available on, on every server on, in this world. It's no, no big deal. Okay, that's the easy thing. Um, I think a lot of people know this. So what can you do to counter it? So you might just think, okay, we need this, this basic storage unit, but what you can do is, you can simply say, we forbid recursion. So everything is fine, yes? The thing is, um, it's not fine. There is an, a variant of this attack named as quadratic blow up, which simply does the following. It um, does only define a single entity, or two or three, or whatever you like, so no recursion. But the string that is uh, defined is very long. So for example, take as an example, it's one megabyte. And what you can now do is, um, you can refer it multiple times. And each time it's replaced by the original entity string. So if the original entity string is one megabyte, you refer it 100 times, you have 100 megabyte. And uh, the original XML document is, is quite, uh, quite small in comparison to the expanded one. So this is one feature. So you might think um, you could also just limit the size of the XML. So I just allow you to submit, I don't know, some kilobytes, let's say, or just say some bytes of XML so that you cannot define larger strings, you cannot do quadratic blow up. Um, but this also does not, uh, does not prevent all attacks. So what you can also do is you can use another feature so this entity looks very similar to the one that I've defined before, but there is another keyword, system. There's also another one, public for the experts, but uh, we keep on with system. And what it basically does is, it does not take the string that is defined there, it dereferences the string. So there's a URI, and it simply downloads this file. And you can guess what happens. So this file is downloaded, it can be some mega, giga, or terabyte, or whatever, and it's now included in the XML. So you can even reference some public server so that so your own attacker server is not using any resources and the XML file is growing up. There are even much, much more techniques for denial of service. And during our research in the last years, we discovered a lot of knowledge is spread over the net. So you can find blog posts and Twitter feeds and so on, all summing up some vectors. And what we tried is to give uh, a cheat sheet for mainly for pen testers so that they have an um, idea of what they can do if they, um, if they counter some problems or if some attack is not working. So if you're interested in, in more techniques, uh, not only for DOS, but all, also for the other attacks, I strongly recommend you this blog post. Okay, so let's have a look at a more critical attack, I would say. So let's talk about XML external entity. and. Um, before we talk about it, let's have a little look. So suppose um, we have some config XML file. And what we want to do is we want to parse it somehow. So let's write a small script to, to parse it. Okay, so how can we parse it? Um, I just decide to use Perl, just because I can. Um, to write a very, very small script. Okay, so we use some libxml library, 
and we define some file, the config.xml, and what we are now doing is we are parsing it, so let's use the parser. Okay, and what we now do is simply we print it. So we print the value, so hello over should be printed. So DOM, go to document element, go to text content. So there is an error. I think, I think that could work, so let's try it. And as you can see here, we simply parse the string. Okay, so this is quite simple, this is no attack. Now, we're editing the XML file, and what we basically do is we add some doc type. So doc type, and we define some entity, let's call it file, and let's say it's a, an external entity by the keyword system, and let's use, because most people use it, pass WD. Okay, then we have to close it. I should, the syntax should be right. And now we have to append it. Okay, so let's use this file. Okay, I'm fine. And let's use Perl to parse it. And what happens is, instead of writing the, 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 the bytes that I've printed, basically, it's dereference and we see the whole content of the etc, etc passwd file. Okay, so let's have a look, just a short look at the, par at the parser again. So all I did is simply, I want to pass some XML file. And if I'm a developer, that's, that's the reason I go. So I'm just using some library, I set up and parse it. And this is not secure because you, are, you, you can do a lot of things with it. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Um, it, now you might think this is very uncommon. So um, what, let's suppose about a more real example. So suppose there's a server which offers you some nice service. So it offers you uh, an image conversation, you can upload some SVG and you can download some PNG for example. So if you upload this um, XML file, which is an SVG, you simply get some image. Okay, that's nice. And if you do the tricks that I've uh, used in the parser right uh, in the live demo, um, you can just simply use your, your uh, code, your vector, you uh, submit it and you will get an image containing the data of the file. So this is basically bad because it's a server, the, you, can, you can read the files on the server. This is what we call critical when we do something in a pen test. Okay, so this is what, what all people know about XXE, or most people know about it. So you might think, well, that's quite easy. So what, what the thing? Um, the thing is, let's try it, uh, something different. So what happens if we don't want to read this? Um, I have to edit the config file. If we don't want to read the passwd file, but another file. So Let's read fs tab. So another file should be shouldn't be a big thing. I only change the parse. So let's use Perl again. And whoa, something strange happens. So we have a parser error, and we do not get the content of the file. It's not displayed. Well, this is a huge difference. And when you when you're starting with XXE, you think, well, it's always possible, but in fact, it's more complicated. Okay, so it works for example, with passwd, but it does not work with fstab. So the thing is, the file etcfstab looks, for example, like this. And maybe, maybe you see something in it, so what you can see is there are some parts which look like XML, but basically they are not valid XML. And because they are not valid, the parser will give an error and say, well, I cannot handle this, it's not XML, I expect XML and I cannot do anything with it. So basically the problem is that we have this, this starting tag which is not closed anywhere in the file. And it's even more complicated, but let's keep it simple. Okay, but 
I will give you an idea how to bypass it. So if you want to read the FS tab, you have to use some trick. The basic trick is quite simple and uses another XML feature, which we call CData. So CData is um, a, a possibility to add arbitrary content, or almost arbitrary content, to an XML file. Um, and what you have to do is simply you have to use a starting CData tag, then you can place arbitrary content here, for example, even these special files that uh, lead to an error when you're not using CData, and you have to close it here. Okay, so if you want to use it, you could think about doing it as follows. So you want to read the etcfs tab file, and you define some start and some end tag basically to define the CData start and the CData end. And the idea is now to put all three together so that you have a valid XML. Okay, that is pretty, pretty nice because if it's parsed, you will get a data and the content of the FS tab. It would be quite nice, but as I told you, it's just the idea. In real life, it's more complicated. So it's not, for example, allowed by the specification to include an external entity in combination with internal entities and to, do, uh, to define this entity like here. But, but the idea, keep the idea in mind, we use CData. So to do a real exploit, you have to do a little bit more. So what you do is you submit an XML file which does not define this, what I showed you before. But another thing, um, it simply loads an external document type definition from some server for example, from my own integral server. And um, when the server passes it, it retrieves from attacker.com the document type definition, and it basically looks the same as in the previous slide, but with one important difference. There are these percentage characters. And this is a special part of document type definitions, which not all people know. Um, it's called the parameter entities. And it's quite powerful because by using parameter entities, you can now read, for example, FS tab. You can now combine C data with some system file content. Okay, and it's defined right here. So we can use start, file, and end. And when we return it, we just get the content back. So that's a trick. Now, we make things even more complicated. So what happens if we don't have an echo? So suppose we are uploading an image file in SVG and we don't get the PNG back. We just store it, for example, or I don't know. Or maybe you know single sign-on, you know I'm, I'm a fan of single sign-on, and um, maybe you know SAML, if not, it's no problem. So what basically happens is you send some login token in XML to a server and he said, yes, you're logged in or you're not logged in. So it's quite simple. You can be either logged in or not. So this scenario is somehow comparable to, for example, blind SQL injection where you don't get feedback. And it's also known by the name out of band attacks. Um, it's still possible to exploit it. It's ugly, but it's possible. So I first give you the idea how to do this. The basic idea is um, you will load the content of a file as before, and now you have to somehow send it to your server as a get parameter. So this is what you're trying to do. Load some content and send it back to the server. Okay, so it's not, it's not working because, oh, I'm sorry, once back. It's not working because the same, because of the same problem, external entities are not allowed in this case. So we have again to deal with parameter entities. Um, basically, it looks very similar to the attack before. We send an XML and we just refer to some um, external document type definition. And what we now do is um, the external type definition looks a little bit different. So first, we use a parameter entity to load some uh, content file and you might see that I'm not using uh, FS tab or PassVD, but using image size. I will come to this back later. Um, and this is just a file, with, with a very simple file. And 
what happens here is we define a new parameter entity, and this looks a little bit strange. It's not an external parameter here, there's no system, but it looks like we are defining here a new entity inside a parameter entity. This is possible, this is the idea of parameter entities. And this entity is named send. You may see it's over there used. It's an external entity, and here we again find the content of the file. So if this DTD is parsed, what basically happens is we define an entity send with the attacker server, and we add the content of the file as get parameter. And now the server performs a new request, not back to the client, but to the attacker, attacker server, and the attacker server gets on a log file, for example, the content of a file. Now, this is a way you can even read files if there's no echo, if you have a blind scenario. Okay, so why are entities a problem? So there's, there are a lot of uh, things you have to um, keep in mind. So for servers, it's really dangerous because with this attack technique, you can read very sensitive files, so containing credentials, for example. It's also possible to do some URL invocation. So, for example, if there are services running only on localhost, which are not accessible from another service, on the server you might send a GET request to do something. Maybe you can shut down it, it's the toy example, of course, or you can do other stuff. And there's even more. You cannot, it's not only restricted to the current server, what you can also do is server-to-server -server communication. So you can contact other servers and, for example, try to detect what network is used, are there open ports, and so on. So you can do a lot of things. And what's often overlooked, it's not only a problem for servers. So on the client side, it's the same problem. If you have some client application parsing XML, for example, you're reading config file, you've written some, some tool to store, serialize the content, and then the same problems appear. So you can basically send a message to the client and you will get the content of its, its notebook or whatever. Okay, so there are even more attack techniques. So this is a quite, quite, uh, long topic, you have a lot of different techniques, so besides parameter entities, there is also xinclude, which is very similar to DTD, it's, it's a, um, basically the same idea, and while passing XML, you should also have a look at XSLT, so we've also already heard something about XSLT here at OVAS, um, so you should also check if you have possibilities, for example, to include some XSLT. And if you're interested in more things, you can uh, just talk to us in the break. Okay, that was my part. And now Christopher is giving you an idea of the parser evaluation. So, hello, can you hear me in the last row? Okay, great. So, for the parser evaluation, um, I also want to start with a quick motivation um, as to show, well, Christian also um, already showed you an example of an XXE attack and it's going in the same direction but for a specific parser. So, I'm choosing Piccolo, it's a Java parser, and as you see here, um, the first point is um, usually you use a factory in Java, but here you can't do it. Well, you can do it, but if you like out, um, if you if you use it with a uh, sex parser factory, you cannot harden the parser, and so therefore, um, right? So here I showed you this. We use a factory and we use the get feature um, and retrieve external general entities. So it's a security relevant DTD feature to disable external general entities. And then we set the feature to false and then we check 
um, what's the output, and the output is still true. So this is just to demonstrate um, that it's not, it's not working with the factory. Therefore, we have to um, use Piccolo directly. So here we instantiate it, and we assign a default handler, and then we parse it. This is quite similar to, what, to the example Christian just uh, showed you. And here we parse a file, standard XML with a data four, and then we print it out, and as you saw before, the output is of course four. So now if we um, do, um, well, a malicious XML file here, the XXE attack, we already discussed it, so you get the content of the files which are referenced here. And now we're coming to the, like, the new part, you're a developer and you want to mitigate these attacks. So you apply a feature, um, set feature external entities to false and this attack is mitigated. However, now you're also still vulnerable to denial of service attacks and to URL invocation or server side request forgery attacks. And what we did in this evaluation is we investigated these features in really um, a thorough manner and checked what are the implications and which features do you have to apply to be secure with your parser. So this is like um, the, the, the contribution of this part. So first, the test setup. We tested 28 different parsers in Ruby, .NET, Python, uh, Perl, Java, and what did I forget, PHP. And we tested for all these attacks, which we already discussed. And the methodology was like, you have first um, to start with one parser and then evaluate which attacks and features are working in which way. So this is like the empirical, um, the, the empirical um, factor of this test methodology. And when you're looking at a new parser, you have always to cross-reference to um, parsers which you previously evaluated, not to miss any um, new tests. And when you did the new parser, you have to check with the old parser and the old parser to the new parser. So you always have to check and do it iteratively and incremental. And if you want to uh, say it in real simple terms, we read the API and did trial and error, but well, it's not entirely true. I have like um, such a long list with, I don't know, these uh, 1,000, where are these? 1,107 tests, um, which um, were accumulated over time. And these are, um, these consist of 16 core tests, which are applied to every parser, and the core test is, for example, this XXE vector. And then we also um, executed additional tests, which are like you have to check which features does a parser support, and um, by this you have to choose your additional test. We will uh, use the following simplified test metric, a base vulnerability score, which indicates the default behavior of a parser, and the total number of vulnerabilities, which should be self-explaining. So you can ask on more um, on this later. So for Ruby, we tested version 2.16, and we did ReXML and Nokogiri. Nokogiri is based on the libxml library, and ReXML is implemented solely in Ruby. So for the results, we have on the one side ReXML with only two vulnerabilities, and you see it's only vulnerable against denial of service attacks. Um, for Nokogiri, you are, you are also only vulnerable against denial of service attacks, and you have a very low base vulnerability score. However, you see this red um, bar here with 28 vulnerabilities. This is like if you enable uh, security or some of the security critical features, um, you can really mess up your parser and end up being vulnerable against like any attack there is. So for Python, <coughs> that was too fast. We did E3, XML, SAX, PullDOM, and LXML, as well as MiniDOM and the Fused XML. And the first, the first four, uh, three are in the standard library, so it's obvious to test them. Um, LXML is a very popular parser, and Diffused XML provides a module for, um, with secure configurations for each of the standard libraries and LXML. So it was pretty interesting to check if these promises are kept by this parser. 
So here you have the overview. We start with the like secure, the, the most secure parser. It's diffuse, and you see you have a base vulnerability score of zero, and only if you enable one feature like X include, you get a problem. But if you don't do this, you're safe. So this is a good recommendation for you. Then if you decide to take E3 or Minidom, I, uh, I just um, put them here together. They don't share a code base, but it's just um, they have the same vulnerability scores. So they're both vulnerable against denial of service. And you see, you don't have any like features which you can mess up, and here's only the X-include features which could provide could make any problems. For XML sex and pull them, um, it looks a little different. You are like uh, vulnerable against nine attacks, both, and like denial of service, XXE, and server-side request forgery, and pull them internally uses XML from sex. So yeah, it invokes this one, the, um, this is the, um, the reason why we put them here together. And last but not least, LXML is vulnerable against um, denial of service and XXE. However, as you see on this red bar here, um, if you enable any features, you can also mess up the parser configuration um, pretty heavy. So I am uh, always have this button here like details Ruby, this is just um, for the question section, if you want to know any details on a parser, we can talk about it. So otherwise I will like show you maybe something from Perl or Java. Then we did .NET, there's XML reader and XML document. XML document implements the DOM API and XML reader is an abstract um, parser class, so there are other um, specific parsers, but Microsoft discourages its use. And this is easily seen here. For XML reader, you're basically totally safe if you use it with the default configuration. Again, if you use a specific implementation, um, these are configured differently, and you might be vulnerable, or you're vulnerable against um, more attacks. Then for XML document, it looks um, worse, because you got here a base vulnerability score of 10, and you're vulnerable against XXE, parameter-based XXE, and server-side request forgery. So PHP, we did the simple XML, DOM document, and XML reader API, and yeah, it's like they are offering three access like um, uh, to, to the document, and the other one is a pull parser, starting with XML reader, this is the secure um, choice for PHP, so you're by default secure. However, if you enable uh, like features, and um, there are also other problems with this parser, like with the features themselves, they're implemented differently, the parser-specific features and the features based on libxml. So um, here you might uh, face some problems, and for simple XML and DOM document, you're by default vulnerable against denial of service. Um, however, here again, if you, if you activate the, the features, um, you got more problems. So Perl, we've already seen this today. Um, XML libxml is the parser based on libxml, and XML twig is another Perl parser. And you see here for XML twig, it's vulnerable against denial of service and XXE, so it has like four vulnerabilities. You can do some bad, uh, some some bad configuration, and um, yeah, have more vulnerabilities. For libxml, you have a worse default configuration with like denial of service, XXE, parameter-based XXE, and server-side request forgery, and you can also set the features in a very bad way. So, and for Java, we did Xerxes, Crimson, Piccolo, Oracle, Sex, and DOM. And the good thing here is they're all equally bad by default, um, so we only have to look at one chart. So they are all, um, yeah, against denial of service, XXE, SSRF, and yeah, if you set features, you can do it even worse in Xerxes. However, the good part is, um, there are also countermeasures available for Java, so you can mitigate all of these attacks. 
So here's a summary of the evaluation. If you look at the first um, like column, you see there are a lot of yeses, yes, 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 yes. So it's about 60%. And the stars indicate that there are no countermeasures available. So you use this parser. However, you have to live with the fact that you're vulnerable to denial of service. For the second column, the XXE attack, you're at around 50%. And yeah, it's, also, it's, it's still pretty bad, but well, that's life. And for the, the more you go to the right, the, the better it looks. However, also the more complicated and the more um, prerequisites um, uh, do your attacks have. So here's um, an evaluation results uh, from my two colleagues. And here you see basically these results reflected, oops, um, reflected um, for the XXE attack. So you see here, there are also a lot of vulnerabilities, like 10 out of the total service providers for um, uh, single sign-on, uh, sorry, yeah, single sign-on um, providers. So if you got questions to this um, part, you can talk directly um, to Vladislav and Christian. So what should you uh, take away from this presentation? Um, of course, um, you should, uh, Look at this table and check out which parser uh, is the most secure by default, so you don't have to do anything um, if possible. Um, otherwise, uh, check out where you might use a parser. For example, um, you have a library running in the background, or you might um, use a parser in a parser in XML encryption, where you first parse the encrypted XML, and then you reparse the, um, so the, de the XML after decryption to access your element structure. And you shouldn't trust the API uh, documentation. Um, if you don't believe me, check out XML Reader from PHP. Um, yeah, you should test and verify it. So if we want to conclude our session, we started with it's just XML, what could probably go wrong? Um, I hope you can all answer this question now, more or less. Um, with the one sentence here, DTDs are a problem and are still a problem, and the default parser configurations um, are still insecure in uh, most cases. Also, countermeasures are not available, so if you choose one parser, you cannot mitigate these attacks. Um, as Christian uh, told you or showed you, or I hope he uh, showed you, or the, the, the slides were, um, expressive that these attacks can really like um, gain complexity and you, you, you're you not just starting with, oh, it's XXE, it's just one, a, a single line of code, but you can do like, um, take it into a C data element, um, uh, hence and forth to an attacker, get it here and send it to there. And here's again the link to the XXE cheat sheet where all the attack vectors are summarized. And if you're like scrolling on the page, you also see another blog post, which is a parser evaluation. There are these results uh, summarized and there are also links to the PDFs and the code base from this project. So there are all the test files and all the parser results in way more detail than we can present it right here. So, and this concludes our session and we're now open for your questions. Um, we didn't report it because it's, it's, right. The question was if we um, reported these vulnerabilities, especially for Java and what the, um, report, um, the, the answers from the vendors were. And um, we didn't report any of these because it's not like um, an implementation issue in the parser but it's a feature from the XML specification. So if you go to the uh, current XML specification, you have these entities and whatnot, what, whatnot, yeah, so it's a feature of XML and it's, no? And they implemented it correctly. However, this opens the parser up to attacks. And the good thing for Java, for example, Xerxes is they took K 
care of this problem, like they implemented a feature disallow doc type decal. So you have to be aware of this problem. The parser is not broken, the parser is great, but you have to set this feature and you have to know about it. So there's no point in contacting the vendor. Okay, the annotation was to suggest um, to make security faults. Um, it would be really great. So if we could have it, it would be really be great and uh, a lot of vulnerabilities would just just uh, never happen. But the problem is I think we will not convince Java for changing their XML parser implementation. So I would agree to you, so it would be really nice if you just have a secure parser by default and a lot of vulnerabilities that we've seen on the second slide would not happen just because people don't use this feature. So people don't use DTDs in most cases, but this feature is hidden, it's enabled and it enables attacks. So it would be really great and maybe it would change for new parsers, but I think for the existing ones it, it will not happen. Um, actually, um, in this, um, the question is if there is a relation between uh, the SAML libraries and um, s the, the XXE attacks. The problem is it was a black box test. So we just s tested a website and we do not know which library is actually used. So we couldn't gather which XML parser is used. So from my experience, I guess a lot of Java parsers were there and this, this would uh, match our results, but I cannot be sure. So it's just a guess. Okay, so if there are no more questions, thanks for the attendance.